Hey everybody, I am over at the Nashville Zoo today. I, it is about 15 after 1 right now. I just purchased my tickets online and the whole reason I'm coming out here today is to do one of the backstage passes and I'm supposed to be able to feed a giraffe and I'm going to tell you this has been on my bucket list for a while is to feed a giraffe. I know that's kind of a, a weird thing to put on your bucket list but I put it on mine. So I'm supposed to meet um, that group and I think I, right now I may be the only one in that group. When I bought the tickets, there was nine spots that you could reserve, and I was the only one that bought one at that point in time, and that was about half an hour ago. So um, the parking, just in case you're curious, parking is $5, an adult entrance to the zoo is $16, and this backstage pass was $40, and then they charged me a processing fee processing fee so I think I paid a total of like $63.50 and I went ouch I wasn't 100% sure I wanted to do that but I did it so I am getting ready to head in right now I'll have some time to look around uh, before I go meet up with this backstage group so I'm taking you along with me today Right now I'm just walking through the zoo. It's still a little bit early to meet for the backstage pass. So I was looking at the flamingos and I'm just walking around. There's supposed to be some spider monkeys here that are new and I don't know where that exhibit is so that's kind of what I'm looking for right now. And people are wondering why I'm talking to my camera. <laughs> and it's just a beautiful day out here. It's very crowded today. And there are other times during the week. This is a Saturday, so of course it's going to be more crowded on a Saturday. I don't know what's over I found the spider monkeys. This is one of the newer exhibits. I want to say it opened in April, so I'm going up in here right now. Then I'll probably... I need to head back and be out front for the backstage pass in about 30 minutes. I may have to switch back to my other glasses. I can't, it's going to be dark in here. I'm just sitting down taking a break right now. I got about 10 minutes before I need to meet my tour group. And again, I may be the only one there. I don't know. Um, 
I went to look at the sloths and one of them was hidden. There are two sloths, I think, and one of them is having some eye issues. And so they said she was at the vet and then her son, Emmett, was hiding today. So I'm finding most of the animals about this time. So I got here about 1.15 or so. Most of them are really sleepy and tired right now. So this is not the best time to come to see a lot of the animals because they are just hiding and sleeping. The flamingos were out, so I got quite a few um, video clips of them and some photos of them. Um, anyway, so I'm hoping this tour will be really good and I'll tell you what I think of it after the tour. And so, because it was quite a bit pricey, I did go ahead and buy a membership. I thought, why not? They were able to put towards the membership what I paid for my admission ticket, which was $6 plus, um, why did I say $6? $16 plus $5 for the parking. So the membership for myself, including one guest, was another 60 something dollars so I've spent quite a bit at the zoo today <laughs> anyway I can come back anytime I want and park free anytime I want thought I'd hold up a minute there <laughs> some babies crying but I can come anytime I want I'm definitely gonna come back during the week when there's less people here and come earlier when the animals are out and um, there is another backstage tour as well it's another $40 I believe but it, I think it goes and sees the anteaters, but there's also a lot more here at the zoo today. I've just only toured one small part of it right now. And let me see what time it is. I've got about seven more minutes before I need to go. It is getting humid, so I just kind of sit down in the shade. Um, so I thought, why not while I'm waiting? <laughs> anyway, I will check back in with you at the tour usually where all uh, employees go. Right. Some animals get fed twice a day, other animals get fed once a day. Um, so these are the animals that get fed twice a day. Okay. And then the right side, that is the 268 containers that we put them on. Who eats the eggs? Um, or what, actually, I should say. a couple of different animals do. Okay. Um, some omnivores, like some of them they use them for training. Uh, sometimes they might put, get medicines uh, and um. mix the egg in it to kind of max the flavor. Um, and so we have those hard-boiled eggs there, so the keepers can go in and grab them as needed. Oh, and they're hard-boiled? They're hard-boiled okay. already. Mm -hmm. so wow. This area, this area and the dish pit are the mm -hmm. only areas that our keeper staff are actually allowed for food safety. Okay. If they need anything else from anywhere in the building, they actually have to ask a diet technician. They will go and get those items okay. to make sure no contamination or quality mm -hmm. or the main lettuce, like yeah. Yeah, Caesar salad. Um, and this so is what the giraffes will eat? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So we're going to grab... Um, now we usually get a bulk shipment once a week for the fruit special. Mm -hmm. So the Harrison's course and the soft is what we feed mm -hmm. to some of our birds. Horse food for our horses. Uh, the llama food is what we feed our alpacas. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Kangaroo food, only the kangaroos are allowed to eat it. Okay. It's scientifically formulated just for them. Just like only the flamingos can eat the flamingo food. Mm -hmm. um, we have to make sure that we always pay attention to make sure who we're feeding because they look very similar. Right. Literally, it's just a color difference. Okay. Um, insectivores, what we feed to our giant anteaters. Since we can't give them thousands and thousands of insects every day, right. they get this. has the same type of nutritional makeup as they would get from eating that many insects. We're actually the only zoo that uses a powdered form of insectivore. We discovered that that makes it easier for them this to eat. It's actually the direct part. So our giraffe farm was built back in 2006, and we've had giraffes here since 2007. Two of the four giraffes... <laughs> so we have two adults, Congo and Margarita. Uh, they are both 12 years old. They have been mom and dad to five babies uh, here at the Nashville Zoo. Um, which is pretty amazing. Uh, baby number five is little Mozzie. He is here. He's four months. And we also have a three-year-old giraffe that we recently got from the Cincinnati Zoo. Um, her name is Nasha. And we're hoping that when she reaches maturity at about four or five years old, that she'll breed with Congo as well. Okay. Um, so that's one big thing about SSP programs is you have to have enough animals um, that are, have different genetics to breed because you don't want to overbreed the same two animals over and over again because then you could list bruising genetic diversity. Ah, okay. Which is what has happened. Uh, that is why, like, right. um, from down here, you really can't see the whole thing, so we're actually going to go upstairs and okay. get a really good bird's eye view. Um, yeah. 
So we have three stalls for our four giraffe. Um, this is Congo's stall, so he's our male. Uh, he's in this first stall. Um, Nasha, our three-year-old, lives in the second one. And then Margarita and her calf, Mazi, live in the fourth stall. Now that fourth stall can be split into two if they need to for um, medical purposes. Okay. Uh, but for the most part, since he's still young, he's still nursing, they have access together. Okay. Usually at all the time, but he's, he's pretty independent. Um, the floor is actually made out of rubber. So that when they're walking, they do have that comfort. Mm -hmm. Because giraffes are usually always standing. Um, right. It's very, very rare they lay down. The calves more so than the adults, just because it's a lot easier to get down, up and down. Mm -hmm. um, the lips, they have to weave their tongue in and around an obstacle and to figure out how to get their food. Yeah. So like this one right now has some leftover grain in this PVC pipe. Okay. They have to move the pipe and spin it with their tongue in order to drop it into the uh, container, which they can then grab with their Okay. Tongue. So different types of puzzle feeders to really just keep their minds engaged. And then we have these big tubs full of locust pods. These are the giraffe's favorite treat. Uh, um, it's like candy for a giraffe. Okay. Um, we do have a bunch of trees on grounds. Um, and so our grounds crew does save them and brings them Free to food. Them, give them. <laughs> um, they're very high in sugar because okay. they have a very syrupy center, like maple syrup. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the best way to a giraffe. <laughs> Which is always tons of fun. Um, there's a line on the ground you cannot cross. Okay. I'll stand at that line. Just make sure you don't go past okay. me. Otherwise, you're in the zone where he can tap. I don't want to be licked. Um, <laughs> or well, on or the kicked. yeah, so or kicked. That's what I'm focused on. I mean, if he licks my hand, hand, I don't care. Licked. That's okay. Um, question: Do you smoke? No, no. Okay. Uh, we've discovered that if. People are smokers that he would try to stick his tongue in their mouth to taste the nicotine. Oh wow. Well. So I always have to ask if people yeah. do smoke. And or the e-cigs, because some of that have nicotine as well. Hey, I'm headed back to the Because you yeah. definitely don't want a French kiss from a drink. <laughs> 18 inch long tongue. And this happened. Um, thankfully every time he's kissed me he's like just kissed my face. Like, oh, okay. Like, time. <laughs> Dreading the day where I'm not paying attention to my doing. Thankfully I haven't got that far. Um, when you feed him, you're going to hold the piece of lettuce up like an ice cream cone. He's okay. Wrap his tongue around it to eat it. Make sure you do let go. Okay. We don't want to play tug of war. No. <laughs> oh, he's right there. And there's a big boy. Hi. Hi. Now, which one is this one beside him? So this is Congo, 12 okay. years old, our okay. male. This is Nasha, the three-year-old. Hi. Hi. Also, big rule, you can't touch. Okay. If you look behind both of them, that's Margarita, the mom. Okay. And Baby is right there. How far can I get? This is the line. Okay, just wear that. Yep. Just gonna wrap this tongue around it. Eat it. <laughs> she, uh, see, she's a little too short to reach mm -hmm. uh, this far. We can only, you guys can only feed her when he's not around. Oh, okay. Um, so Cause I you get to, too close. I have to sneak her food in order to get it, plus he doesn't like to share Actually, my side draft. Now, okay. his spots are a lot darker. That is a sign that he's the dominant male of the herd. Okay. Um, male spots do darken with age. The dominant male will have the darkest spots. They okay. darken because of testosterone. Okay. Hi. He's like, I want a piece. So what's crazy is like she has that really soft, smooth forehead. Mm -hmm. And if you look at him, hey, kind of go. Thank you, sir. You can see how he has those bumps and ridges on his forehead. She's gonna feed you, sir. And I'm gonna sneak her food. Good job. So you can see that both eight. So their spots are very uh, jagged and leaf like. Um, Congo's doesn't really have that shape as much, but Nasha's does. What's really cool is you can actually identify the type of giraffe just by looking at their spots. Oh, wow. So there's the four different species okay. of giraffes that each have different type of spot. Scientists believe that their spots are shaped different ways because they're receiving different amounts of sunlight. Okay. So oh, that's skin. interesting. Um, some say thermoregulation, thermo some don't, so I don't really know that. If you watch that music video, you might recognize a certain face. Alrighty. You have to share with Nacho, okay, sir? Yeah. You have to share. So basically, I'm giving them the, this treat because they're doing the behavior we want, which is okay. eating. They get rewarded for eating, which is pretty awesome. 
I wish I had that life every time I ate. <laughs> Somebody gave me my favorite treat in the world. So one side of feet than the other. So if you could see mom and baby, yeah. on one side, then the other. Oh, Unlike a dog. That's so cute. I know. Only one other animal has an ambling gait like that, which is the okapi. Okay. So they know they're done getting fed mm -hmm. and they're they going to go. Know once they get the locust pods, that that's it. No more. They're very, very smart. The baby likes to stay close to mom. Yeah. Occasionally he'll come over and look. And the girls, it's really funny, they actually love to uh, eat the grass off the ground, so they sp splay their legs in order to bend down mm -hmm. to get it. Um, knowing that they do that, it's actually... Now, having that stripe pattern on his back legs does ha help him camouflage. It breaks up his overall shape in the tree line. Helps keep him safe from predators. Um, they are all unique. No two okapi have the same stripes, just like... Oh, like a fingerprint. Yep, yeah, just like a fingerprint. Um, and whenever it moves, they see those stripes move and they know I have to follow them. Mm -hmm. So it gives them a focal point to follow. Okay. Now when moms have calves, um, what they'll do is mom has to eat in order to produce enough milk for the baby. Um, so they actually create a little nest. Uh, the baby will stay on the nest and then mom will go out and eat and then she'll come back and make the nurse, just like deer. Okay. Um, so the baby will stand or lay on the nest and just kind of wait. Um, mom's milk is so chock full of any potential nutrients that they might need. The baby actually will triple in size in the first two months. Wow. Um, is well, I am back in the car and I've got to tell you, the backstage pass was so worth it. I'm so happy I did it. Um, definitely ticked a box off my bucket list getting to feed the giraffes. It was so informative and just fascinating learning about all the stuff that goes on in the background, the amount of food that they feed them. I think they said the cost of food a year was like what, like $325,000 or it's definitely over $300,000 the cost of the food for all of these animals. I got to see the commissary. I filmed a little bit of that in there with some of their food. Got to go into the giraffe barn and feed the male giraffe. And uh, then there was another animal called the okapi that he did not come up for us to feed him. But if he were, if he would have come up, we would have gotten to feed him as well. But I got to see his barn. So definitely worth the $40 in my opinion. And I actually had such a better time doing the backstage pass than I actually did seeing the zoo itself. But I didn't spend a whole lot of time out here at the zoo, the zoo portion where all the other people go in. But I was lucky with this backstage pass that I was the only guest on this tour today. Normally I think they do a max of nine people. So I was just like, this is just great. I'm just doing it by myself and I loved it. Even if you do go with other people, I definitely recommend it. It was so informative. I got to ride up front with a driver and she was so nice. Her name was Jessica. So I just had the best time out here and I'm so happy I did it. I hope you guys enjoy this footage of this vlog. So I'm going to go ahead and end it now. This will be my day at the Nashville Zoo with the backstage pass and getting to feed a giraffe. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye, everybody.